All right, now for the final on-premise hypervisor. We're going to take a look at installing ICE on Nutanix Community Edition using the ZTP method. If you haven't already seen the video on how to create the ZTP configuration image, click here to watch it now before watching this video. As you can see here, we can use either the .img or .iso format for the ZTP configuration image. I'll use the ISO in this video, but the IMG steps are exactly the same. One of the most compelling reasons for using Nutanix is the fact that the Community Edition is a free version of the software built on CentOS and uses VNC as the console viewer. There is a knowledgeable and active community for any assistance you may need, but don't rely on support from Nutanix for this free version. The on Nutanix is Cisco supported for version 3.0 and newer. You must use AHV, the Acropolis hypervisor, as the installed hypervisor for Nutanix. ICE installation on Nutanix is only possible using the ICE installation ISO, and there are some additional configurations needed per VM to be able to run ICE on Nutanix. Specifically, these commands. If you do not run these commands on the Nutanix controller VM, or CVM, then ICE will think that you are trying to install onto a non-supported bare metal server and will abort the installation. First, since we're in the CVM anyway, let's add a serial port, since this is the only way to monitor the ZTP installation process. Then, we can update the VM to disable the Hyper-V clock, and finally, update the VM to disable hypervisor branding. The last two updates will let the ICE installation detect the hypervisor as KVM, and will allow the installation to proceed. So let's jump right in. In the Nutanix console, let's go to Settings and then Image Configuration. This is where we're going to upload our ISO file and our ZTP configuration image. I've already uploaded my ISO file, so I'm going to put the ZTP configuration image name in this box. The image type is going to be ISO. Whether we do the IMG or the ISO file, we're going to choose image type ISO for this to work. Then we're going to upload the file that we need and save this. Once this process finishes, you can see the creating image in the top. And then once it says uploading file 100%, we can move on to the VM menu. Now we want to create our virtual machine. To do this, we click on the create VM text in the top right corner of our dashboard. This will bring up the dialog to create our VM. Well, let's give it a name, upgrade our cores of four CPU cores, 16 gig of RAM. And when we come down to disk, we need to add our install disk. So we're going to add 300 gigabyte disk for an install disk. Then we're going to look at our CD-ROM and we're going to mount our ISO file in here for our ICE installation. Once we update this, we can add a new CD-ROM. So we're going to add new disk here, change the disk type to ISO, change from empty CD-ROM to clone from image service, and this will pre-populate with the only other image that we have in our image service. So then we'll scroll down and we'll add our NIC. And then once that's added, we can save. Once the virtual machine is created, it'll show in this list. Once you see it, go ahead and select that VM and then choose power on from the menu at the bottom. Now, as you can see, the launch console is still grayed out. With Nutanix, you cannot launch the console until the machine is powered on. And once we get to that point, the launch console button will appear. Go ahead and click on that to start the console. Let's bring it down into view. And then again, if you wait 150 seconds, ZTP process starts automatically, or you can just press enter to get it going. I'm gonna expand this window here so that when the resolution changes, we can keep all the contents within the window. Now, if you let this sit, it'll sit here forever. We're going to restart the VM and just boot to the ICE installation as we normally would to install ICE from the ISO using option number one. And we can see why the installation stalls at that point. As you can see, now that the installation process is being output to the actual console that we're looking at, once the installation stalls, it's because we're getting the error for unsupported hardware detected. No harm. Now we just power off the virtual machine. And then we will SSH into our CVM. Now when we SSH into it, I have it set for the default username as Nutanix. I have the commands that I need already in a notepad file, so I'm going to bring up that file. And I'm just going to do these one by one. The first one, I'm going to go ahead and create our serial port. So I'm just going to paste that in. And as you can see, it's very quick to complete. 
Next, I'm going to take away both of the branding options for Hyper-V and Disable Branding. And once that happens, we can go ahead and turn the virtual machine back on. I want you to notice, though, that as we turn this virtual machine back on, we're going to take a look at the launch console. Once we do launch that console, you see we have options for both VNC and COM1. VNC is the normal graphical interface that we are used to. COM1, of course, is our serial interface. So we're going to choose the VNC. And then here we're going to go and start the CTP process by pressing enter. Once we do that, let's go ahead and launch another console for COM1. And now we can watch the ZTP installation process as it happens. I'm probably in the minority here, but I really wanted to see these two windows side by side as I installed ICE this time to see what the differences are between the installation options. So let's go ahead and get that other VNC window up here. As you can see, it's during the Linux installation process that the resolution changes and gives us that bigger screen in the VNC window. Once the Red Hat installation finishes and the server reboots, you can see that nothing more is output to the serial console at all. And then here we are at the familiar setup prompt with the ZTP configuration information already filled in as ICE finishes up its installation process. I'll speed this up a little bit so that we'll have to sit through the whole thing for about an hour or so. And then we'll get to the first reboot after ICE is installed. All right, now ICE is installed and now we just need to verify the settings we have configured. Let's go ahead and log into the CLI. Let's use the right password because you can see that I fat fingered my entry and I put in the wrong password. Once we're logged in, we're gonna use the command show running config, otherwise known as the show run. And this is gonna let us know that the base settings that we put into our ZTP configuration file have been translated over to ICE and we can see all the information here, including the host name, the IP address, and so on. Next, we're gonna verify our patch and hot patch have been installed by using the command show version history. As you can see, both the hot patch and the patch have been installed here. You can also use show version but that will only show you the patches that have been installed. This will not show you any of the hot patches at all. Now we're going to use the command show application status ice. This is going to monitor what processes are up and running to let us know when we can use the web interface. When the application server process is in the running state, we can open up our browser and point it to the ice IP address. Remember to use HTTPS in front of the IP address. Otherwise you'll never get to the ice server. And then once you get the certificate warning, click the advance and then the proceed buttons, and then you can log into the ICE GUI. The first time that you log into ICE, however, you're going to get this pop-up asking if you want to send telemetry information to Cisco. We're going to provide this later, and then we get a license warning. Let's go ahead and close this. We're going to click the gear in the upper right-hand corner and go to About ICE and Server. It's an easy way to verify the patch installation inside the ICE interface. Then we're going to go to Administration, System, Settings go to API settings and then we're going to go to API service settings. We can see that the ERS and open API services that we set in the ZTP configuration are enabled. And then finally we can go to the deployment screen, get rid of this dialog, click on our host name, then we're going to scroll all the way down and we're going to verify that PXGrid and PXGrid Cloud have both been enabled. And that's it. ICE has been installed on Nutanix Community Edition. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, like, subscribe, follow me. I'm going to have all kinds of links in the description, and I'll talk to you in our next video. Thank you.